Welcome everyone to the first WPI System Dynamics Collective Learning Meeting co-hosted with the System Dynamics Society's South Africa chapter. Andreas, Andreas will start off with some announcements. Uh, thank you, Christine. Um, uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, basically, what I would like to do is to just uh, ask you to please visit our website. You can access it through the Society website. There's a link to the various chapters. Uh, and on our website, you'll see that there's an advertisement for our conference, our 10th annual, and very important, this is going to be our 10th annual conference. Uh, it will be run from the 16th to the 18th of November. And because it's our 10th and we want to make it uh, very as widely accessible as possible, um, actually, uh, there will be no fees to, to join. It will be fully virtual. And what we are planning is on the 16th of November, uh, we plan to run a session for the Americas. So basically starting at six o'clock in the evening at South African time to just align better with the uh, American time. And then on the 17th, we'll also start the early session. So six o'clock in the morning, South African time to allow the Oceania and Australia, Australasia people to join us. Uh, the process is simple. You can uh, enroll now and indicate that you want to put up an abstract. We will review the abstracts. And then based on that, we have an opportunity for full papers, which will be published in our proceedings. We will also have an opportunity for just presented work. Uh, and then also for uh, case studies in a workshop format where we will allow practitioners so that there's less of an academic uh, link to that, but more focused on practical application of system dynamics. And then also just the announcement on the competition. Um, our fifth system dynamics modeling competition uh, will also start soon. Uh, again, it's on the website. Uh, it is open and free. This year, what we would like to do is to split the competition into three different categories to allow beginners to not have to compete against experienced modelers, but also give experienced modelers an opportunity to join there and show us what they can do. Uh, so we've also challenged our policy council to all get back and sit down to the nose to the grindstone and do a model for us. And then this year, we plan to do a milestone driven event to just make it easy for everybody to plan and manage the project. Um, and without further ado, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Please remember to mute your microphones unless you want to ask a question. Feel free to ask questions at any time and to use the chat box. If you type a question there, I, Christine Tang, can ask the question for you. Our presenter today is Phyllis Quenda. Phyllis recently earned her PhD in bioresources systems, focusing on house hold solid waste management. Take us away, Phyllis. Thank you so much. Um, let me just uh, share my screen. Please let me know when you're able to see my presentation. Yes, I can see it. So um, my name is Phyllis once again, and I, I, I got my degree uh, from the University of KwaZulu-Natal in Peter Marisberg, South Africa. And my supervisors were Dr. Lagaho uh, from UKZ and uh, Dr. Bas Van Rujman from IASA, and as well as Dr. Sibo as well uh, from, from IASA. So my PhD, um, that uh, on the screen is the title of my PhD. Uh, but in actual essence, uh, what the gap uh, in knowledge that we're trying to fill was that uh, there have been a, a proposal of uh, uh, doing a, a community-based approach to waste management, particularly household solid waste management in Zimbabwe, but there hasn't been a, a, a study that is specific to Harare uh, where they, they assessed the materi material recovery potential of uh, community-based waste management. So that was the gap that the study was uh, trying to fill. But I will take you through, um, these are the, the chapters that we, we had in, in, my, in my thesis. And so I feel like it would make more sense if I just quickly go through. I will not talk much on the first uh, uh, four chapters. The final chapter um, 
uh, is the one that is uh, most relevant to this uh, presentation. But these uh, chapters, they, they, they feed into the final chapter. So I, I thought that it was necessary for me to briefly talk about them. So um, basically, um, municipal solid waste management is increasing uh, by the year globally, uh, and so is it in Zimbabwe. Um, and there are so many uh, uh, um, issues that have been attributed to that. Uh, for example, the increase in population, um, urbanization, and, and all those kind of things. But in Zimbabwe, you find that the, the household solid waste management uh, uh, system is now in Tatas and it, uh, it is actually contributing to a number of deaths annually. So this is why I specifically wanted to do the study in order to see if there are ways that it can be improved without really demanding much on the finance side as uh, we know that Zimbabwe is an economically challenged country. So when you talk about an integrated waste management plan, it's basically uh, when we're implementing a new waste management uh, system, we need a, a framework which will act as a guide or as a reference. And so in, in my study, we wanted to not develop an integrated waste management plan, but actually an action plan, which is basically a skeleton uh, that can be used to develop the, the integrated waste management plan. Because uh, as you know, uh, the plan takes a long time. It needs uh, feedback from the from the from the municipality and other stakeholders, and it it can it can take uh, quite a lot of time. Uh, so uh, we only focused on the first two stages of the of developing an an integrated waste management plan, and for the second one, we only developed an action plan, which we are yet to to present to the municipality so that they can give us feedback on if it's something that they can implement. So in this study, we, we split it into two phases. The first one was a qualitative phase and the second one was a quantitative one. In the qualitative phase, we aimed to want to understand the, 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 the study area, which is Harare, um, Harare city in Zimbabwe. And so first we, we did a, a systematic literature review in order to understand the system, uh, the household solid waste management system. And then we did another literature review in order to understand the issues around the, the or that are influencing the system. And then this phase fed into phase two, which is quantitative where we did uh, network analysis, where we wanted to understand the leverage points, which are the, the main influencing factors in the, that are affecting the waste management system. And then uh, this also, these results fed into uh, the, 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 the last uh, part, which is the systems dynamics, dynamics modeling part, where we developed a, a simple systems dynamics model simulating the system. And uh, then we, we, we ran a few scenarios in order to see which ones would uh, be best for the city. So now for chapter two, uh, that is the, the, uh, the mini review that we did on the household solid waste management system. So Harare, uh, just to give a background of the city, it's, a, it's the capital city of, uh, of Zimbabwe, which is a country in Southern Africa. And Harare in itself is in the Northern, it's, an, it's, a, it's a city which is found in the Northern part of, uh, part of uh, Zimbabwe. And the population is quite deep, De debated in literature and some say it's 1.5, some say it's about 3 million and some say it's over that. So yeah, it's quite unpredictable because the last census that they did was around 2010. So you can imagine that they do not have much reliable data uh, when it comes to the population. But we also uh, saw that there are about 181,000 uh, um, housing stock, uh, residential housing stock. 67% um, of which are uh, high, high density suburbs. And we also realized from literature that city council is by law uh, the, the one which is solely responsible for managing household solid waste in the, in the city. So basically the city uh, mainly uses the traditional closed uh, waste management system where it's, it doesn't see much diversion of the waste from the landfills. Uh, so we basically have waste generation, uh, waste collection, and waste disposal. They don't even have a, a, an engineered or sanitary landfill. They they use a dump site, and the main one is called Pomona dump site. So that's where uh, 
most of the household solid waste is dumped. The other one is mainly for, for, for industrial waste and all. And we found that they, they have like a waste generation uh, rate uh, per capita of about 0 0.38, uh, of which most of the waste that is produced in these uh, uh, residential areas, 60%, about 50 to 60% of this is biodegradable matter. And uh, they produce about uh, 200,000 uh, household, uh, tons of house, kgs of, of, of household solid waste. Um, and uh, waste collection and, and transportation, it consumes about 70% of the budget from the municipality, where they mainly use the curbside uh, uh, collection method. Um, uh, they also have a communal method of collecting waste, but this is usually done in hospitals, residential areas, and all that kind of stuff. And then we have a, uh, according, now this data, I have to make it clear that this data is from the data records from the municipality. When you check in literature, it, it, it varies quite much because in literature, they do uh, say that uh, waste collection uh, efficiency is about 50% or less in depending on the area where in low density areas, you find that there is, uh, proper waste collection, but then in high density, sometimes there is not even waste collection in some of the high density areas. So, yeah, and then we, they collect about uh, 170,000 uh, tons of, of, of household solid waste annually, and all of the waste which is uh, uh, disposed in the main uh, dump site, which is Pomona, with the average uh, recovery efficiency at 9.5. And it is also important to note that this 9.5% is calculated uh, uh, as a percentage, is the amount of waste recovered uh, as a percentage of the waste that is collected. Because most of the waste that uh, is recovered is, is uh, recovered from the dump site. So yeah, because the, uh, uh, later on in the study, you find that we are going to use a, a different recovery efficiency because we, we changed the, uh, the recovery, how the recovery uh, potential was 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 calculated to the amount of waste recovered over the total amount of waste that is produced in the city. So going on to the third chapter, we now wanted to understand. Since now we 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 had uh, gathered information on the waste management system, we wanted to understand that what is crippling this uh, household waste management system in in Zimbabwe. So what we did was uh, we used uh, in vivo, just as we did for the first literature review, we used uh, a computer-based uh, qualitative analysis tool in vivo, where we just tried to understand uh, the, 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 to find out how much um, of these issues were reported in literature. So what we did, we, we started ranking them into the one, the issues which were most reported to the issues which were least re reported. And we just assumed that the most reported um, issues were the most important one or the most prevalent one in, in, in Harare. Now, there, there are a number of uh, issues that, that we found out. As you can see, the font is small and the table goes on and on and on. So I just had to show just a bit of it. Uh, for example, the first one was population. Uh, then we have uh, uh, poor disposal, increase in waste volumes, open waste burning, uh, waste collection efficiency, and so on. We'll explain this later in the coming chapter. Where uh, what we did, we didn't. Uh, we we understand that uh, the issues can be divided into drivers and outcomes depending on. Are they the ones that are causing issues in the city, or are they like results? Of, 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 of issues in the city. But then at, at this point, we just wanted to list all the issues that were raised as concerns in over the Harare RS, uh, waste management uh, uh, system. So next, what we did was we tried to also understand or to categorize these issues on which part of the waste management system do they affect? Um, for example, here, uh, waste generation, we figured out, for example, 
Harare is the capital city of, uh, of of Zimbabwe, and we know that when it comes to a capital city, that is like the main, that is where most economic activities occur, which attract population and all that. So that's why we listed this as one of the issues that is the capital city it is prone to many problems, and it would totally need a, a greater capacity to, to handle uh, the population that it attracts. And then, for example, in, increased uh, uh, street vending which also is connected to things like the, the economical downfall of the country, which has increased unemployment in the city, uh, which in turn has increased the amount of street vendors and no proper uh, bins nearby, which means that people are just um, throwing litter everywhere. So this is the table that we created for that. Um, and then we also, I did not, um, I did not, yeah, because it was going to be so much uh, information. Okay. I'll show it. Let me just show it later. I'll also show you some of the data that we, we also gathered uh, that I did not show here. So let's just go on to the next chapter, chapter four, where we try to identify the leverage points in the in the system, most management system using network analysis techniques. So uh, this is one of the, 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 the networks that we developed. And what we did was, uh, since there were so many issues that we identified that were affecting the household service management system, we decided to number them because if we had put them as words, then it would be difficult to read the, the diagram. So this network is was developed in ARA, and uh, this, the sizes of the nodes, uh, uh, they, they show the, the size of the degree centrality. And when we talk about degree centrality, we, we basically mean that it, it shows how connected uh, a, a particular node is. Remember in this instance, every node re represents an issue, a, a household civil waste management issue in, 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 in Harare. And then the, the edges, they represent connection between the, the issues. So the degree centrality shows how connected uh, a particular, how immediately con connected a particular node is to others. And so generally the network size was 95, which means that we had 95 issues that were identified, like 95 major issues that were identified in literature. And the number of edges, that is the number of relationships that existed between those uh, issues was 138. And then the network density is 1.5% and the number of clusters is 15. And uh, when we talk about the number of clusters, uh, it, it means uh, the number of separate groups of issues that we find in the network. And this network density and the, the lower network density and the a quite large number of uh, clusters, they actually show that um, in order to find like solutions that can, um, that can bring significant changes to the household solid waste management system, they would need to be seeded in different parts of the, of the, of the, of the, network, of the network. I'll explain that later in another uh, table where it becomes more clear. This is another network that we developed uh, where we tried to, we used, uh, uh, we, we drew the network based on bet betweenness centrality. Now, when we talk about betweenness centrality, we mean um, how influential, because basically uh, centrality measures the influence of a particular node. When it comes to betweenness, it, it shows how much influence that a particular node has in other, nodes which are not immediately, which might not be immediately uh, connected to it, or uh, which are from other clusters. So basically, uh, a, a node which has a higher betweenness centrality, it shows that it has the potential to bring influence in other clusters, which is, is not particularly the one that it is. So example, if we look at this uh, table here, it shows the, the number of clusters that, I mean, the, the clusters that we had and then issues that we, 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 we listed in each of the clusters. And these ones, the, the issues that we highlighted in red, it shows um, 
there is uh, what they call the Pareto principle, uh, which is the 80-20 rule in which they say that in every organization, if we are to classify 20% uh, um, of the uh, issues, of the most influential issues and address those, it would bring the most influence to the organization. So here we, we took the, the top 20% of the most influential uh, issues based on uh, the between and centrality. And then we, we, we identified where in each, like in which cluster these are found. Now, you, you can see that um, addressing these would potentially bring much change to the system because it's like you're addressing almost all the clusters because it's only like three clusters where we don't find like the top 20 of the issues. So these are the issues that we thought that if, if they are highlighted to the municipality and if they address these, then they can potentially significantly affect the system. Phyllis? Yes. Yes, I saw that you were somewhat stopping, so I want to ask a oh, question. Yeah. Does the between us help us identify causal links? Uh, closer links, is it? Did you say closer yes. links? Yes. Um, not that I am aware of. I, I, I know that it makes us identify um, just how, how influential or just how, uh, I don't know how to put it, just how much of an, of, of, of an influence that a particular node has in other issues which are not immediately connected to it. So, which means that if, uh, for example, in a network, uh, if, 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 a, if a node has the potential to influence another node, which is not directly uh, linked to it, which means it has potential to influence many other uh, nodes. I don't know if I'm, I'm explaining that right, or if I'm, if I'm explaining it the way that uh, you can understand it. Because it's different from a, from a degree centrality where you just address this issue, you just ad address one, you are mainly focusing on one particular issue. Okay. I also don't want to interrupt so much, but I work better with an example. So I think you'll go into that more. Thank you. Um, let me just also um, uh, show something here. Uh, sorry, I'm because some of the things I couldn't show them here. Um, it's, it's so much information. So yeah, so this is some like based on the the top twenty issues, uh, top twenty percent of the the issues that we identified. Uh, we also tried to use the three ARA. Uh, waste management policy, like just to identify, okay, how best can they address these 20 issues uh, in Harare? For example, can avoid or reduce consumption, which will in turn um, uh, reduce the, the waste generation rate. They can uh, reduce the amount of waste that is produced by introducing taxes, uh, different policies that, that, that control certain uh, uh, behaviors. Um, and uh, when it comes to waste collection, they can increase the collection efficiency. Um, they can uh, they can uh, in increase. Uh, they can uh, contract private waste collection service providers, among other things. So these are some of the things that we actually identified in literature on what they can do to address the the twenty uh, most important issues that we identify. But then from this now, we, uh, we, we, we looked at Harare and uh, the issues that are mainly also affecting, that have been identified in the municipality as the things that are affecting um, implementation of some of the strategies that they, they have uh, 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 taken up so far because they have uh, tried privatization before and it only lasted for two years and, and then they, they stopped because of uh, financial issues. And they also uh, one, uh, started a campaign, a, a cleanup campaign, and they, they also developed an integrated waste management plan. So this, all this is not new to them. They have tried some of these strategies and they have failed. So some of these uh, issues that, have, uh, that we, we saw in literature, things that 
they have tried to do, but it they failed. For example, if they are to uh, they are to increase like the waste collection efficiency, maybe they are to increase the number of uh, vehicles that are available or the number of trips that they have to take to collect the waste. But this is not possible because they can't even maintain the fleet that they have due to financial issues. They don't even have enough uh, workers to, to, to service those vehicles. So these, uh, it's, it's um, solutions like these that are sort of like impractical at the moment, uh, uh, considering the, the, the Harare city. So we also tried, this is why we came down to the community-based uh, waste management approach. That's why we selected it because we know that it is cost-effective. It has been uh, done in, uh, in other low-income countries like Zimbabwe, and it has been proven effective. So that is what fed into the next chapter, uh, which is the community-based uh, management of, of the assessment of this uh, uh, community-based management uh, program for Harare. So uh, what we, this is the current uh, household solid waste stream flow in Harare, where we have unsorted waste, uh, then they just, all of it, um, all of the waste that is collected, most of the waste is not, it remains in the residential areas and and is mostly illegally dumped by the residents. But for that waste that is collected, it is uh, put at the Pomona dam site where most of the recovery occurs. And then uh, the remaining waste lays in there and then it is sold to recycling companies. Now, this is the proposed uh, household waste stream flow in which we are uh, saying, what if there is uh, introduction of waste sorting at household level, but it, in this case, it is difficult also because some of these are some of the studies like social studies that have been done in order to understand uh, how people are responsive to things like uh, waste uh, separation at source. And it, it doesn't show really much of a good performance. But in this case, we are saying, okay, what if we just take uh, all the food left to us, which is most of the wet waste in the household solid waste. And then we just say each household compost that waste and in, in so doing, we are kind of like introducing sorting at waste because we just have this dry waste that we are now collecting. So that dry waste uh, and the other wet waste, which we would think that it would be uh, minimal, is then taken to the dam site. And then there is a recovery at the dam site, then uh, sold to the recycling company. So what we did was, we had all these 95 issues that uh, are around Arares uh, household uh, solid waste management. Then we, we saw that this was the, we chose these issues because this was the data that we were given by the Arares municipality. We weren't even given uh, much historic data because we only had data from 2014 to 2020 of which 2014 data was not even, uh, we didn't have all the data of all these uh, um, um, variables, like from 2014, some, most of it, it, we only had data from 2015 to 2020. So that is why we specifically focused on, on the waste management system and these immediate factors that are affecting the waste management system, because these are the, the, the variables that we had data for. So for example, um, when we talk about uh, waste collection efficiency, we know that there are other issues that can affect it. Like for example, the number of uh, uh, trips, uh, collection trips, the number of uh, vehicles that they have, the capacity of the vehicles and, and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but then uh, all of this data we did not have. So we couldn't include those variables here. So we just uh, took it as waste collection efficiency because we had data for waste collection efficiency. So this was the causal loop diagram that we ended up using to develop uh, the, 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 waste, the waste model. So this is the, the model that we, 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 we used. Um, um, so basically we had a small population model here and then we, which where we calculated the population from the city net growth and um, 
we also calculated the amount of waste produced. We split the, 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 the amount of waste produced uh, into three, depending on the socioeconomic class. Because like I mentioned before, most of the households that are there in, in Harare, 67% of the houses in Harare, they are in high density areas. The greater population, about 0.6% of the population is in high density areas. The, the, according to literature, even the waste generation rates in these social economy classes, they are different. And we also, according to literature, the literature studies that we did, we also found that in low density areas, we rarely find uh, uh, illegal dump sites, which are found in high density areas because in low density areas, they also have access to their own receptacles. They also have cars to take their own waste to the dump site, which is not the case in high density areas. So we wanted to separate those. So when we calculated the household solid waste um, generated, we split it. Uh, into the different socioeconomic classes. And we got this data from the municipality, which she has estimates or, on the percentages of each of these uh, socioeconomic classes. So when it comes to waste collection efficiency here, we would have, we, we, we had wanted to, to, to split the, the waste collection efficiency, but then the, the, the municipality only has one over our waste collection efficiency. So we couldn't, um, we didn't even have estimates from literature. We couldn't find uh, literature which uh, reliably uh, uh, gave us uh, data on the waste collection efficiency of, 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 the, of, of, of each of these socioeconomic classes. Because even in the high density areas, we also have some high density areas which receive collection, which also is attributed to the fact that they do not even have routing systems in the city. So sometimes they, the, 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 um, the drivers, the collection vehicles, they, they don't even service some vehicles, even if they are told to service the area, they don't service the entire area. So there are a lot of, there's a lot of missing data, incomplete data, there, which, which, which made it so difficult. We tried, it made it so difficult for us to calculate for each of these socioeconomic classes. So for the um, waste disposal, um, we just uh, uh, took all the waste that is, in all the waste that is uh, collected, if it is not recycled, then it was also considered as illegally dumped waste because we, we looked at the dump site, it's, it's not um, sanitary. So still, even if the waste is collected, it's not, being legally dumped. So all the waste that is remaining in the residual areas and all the waste that is not recycled is considered as illegally dumped waste in the model. So this is the this is how we calculated uh, the, 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 the waste generation. And these uh, population net growth, we got it from the last census was the uh, last reliable uh, value that we had, the last census that we had in 2012, if I'm not mistaken. It is where, so we basically assumed that this has remained constant over the years. We also assumed that um, the, the initial uh, population was 1.4 million. And um, we assumed that the waste generation rate is 0.14 tons per capita. But this, uh, we, we we used it, uh, it is the average uh, waste generation rate that we calculated from the, from the data that were provided by the municipality. So uh, this is how we, we calculated uh, waste that is produced in each socioeconomic class where this is the, the total amount of waste that is produced and this is the fraction of the socioeconomic class in the city where we high density areas have the higher population of 0.6 and then 0.3 for medium density. HD is high density, MD is medium density, and LD is low density, which is as approximately 0.1% of the population. And um, then this is the waste collection efficiency, which we calculated from the, sorry. This is the uh, waste collection efficiency, which was calculated from the average waste collected uh, and the total amount of, 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 of waste that is produced. 
So then we go on to the waste uh, disposal uh, um, sub model where we have uh, the number of, let's see is the number of amount of waste that is collected from different socioeconomic classes and C1, C2, C3 uh, represent the, 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 the waste that is collected from the, 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 the different uh, uh, suburbs that is low density, medium and high density respectively. And we calculated the waste, uh, the recovery rate from the amount or is the amount of waste recovered over the total number. Like I mentioned earlier in the municipality, they calculated is the amount of waste recovered uh, over the amount of waste that is collected, which is different from how we did it here. And then the illegally dumped waste was calculated as the total amount of waste uh, that is uh, uncollected, that means in the, in the residential areas, as well as the amount of waste that is not recycled, that is how illegally dumped waste was calculated. And so for the model testing, we did sensitivity analysis where we, we, we varied um, uh, uh, the different uh, waste management uh, uh, variables, uh, plus or minus 100% uh, of the model set value, which were, as I said before, were calculated using the, the, the values that the data that we obtained from the RRA City Council. And so we assessed these outputs or the behavior of these variables when we changed each of these variables. And we ran this in Stellar. We also developed, uh, I forgot to mention, we also developed the causal loop diagram in Stellar as well. So for the scenario analysis, uh, the first scenario was the baseline, um, which, which, which was aimed at explaining the current state of the RRS waste management system. And uh, scenario two was uh, tried to, to, to see how uh, the system would behave if we introduced uh, com compulsory uh, household solid waste uh, compo household solid waste composting of food left of all food leftovers. So, for example, in 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 scenario two, we had three implementation levels which described what uh, social economy class are we covering and to what extent are we covering it. For example, implementation scenario two implementation level one. Uh, assessed that what if we compost all the food leftovers that is produced in high density areas. And this information, wh why we chose uh, high density uh, areas only first is because the high density areas uh, produce the greatest amount of organic waste or food leftovers. And they also carry the largest population. So it, it was gonna be a little sensitive, um, sensible to, to prioritize, to make this implementation level one high density areas composting of all food lifters. So which means basically 53% of all the household solid waste produced in high density areas is going to be uh, composted. This would be done at household uh, level. And then implementation level two, we, we would uh, uh, assume um, implementation of composting at, in high density and medium density areas, which medium density areas were the second largest producers of, of organic waste or food levels, hence them being at implementation level two. Implementation level three would um, include uh, composting in all, in basically the entire city, all residential areas in the city. So why we also thought of introducing the different levels is, for example, when municipality is thinking of uh, implementing these scenarios, then it can depend, instead of just introducing it in, in the entire city, then it can assess uh, which one is the most uh, sensible to introduce or like which is the optimum level of implementation to, to introduce at a particular time. So yeah, I'll explain that later as well as we, as we progress, as we get to the results. But in scenario three, we, we tried to see like, what if we increase only, because in scenario two, we only focused on composting. What if we introduce composting? In scenario three, what if we in, in introduce plastic and paper recycling? Why paper and plastic recycling? Because these are the, uh, they, they are the greatest, um, uh, comp compost, uh, is, is the waste has the greatest composition of paper and plastic when it comes to 
dry waste. So, uh, so implementation level one, we wanted to focus on what if we introduce uh, uh, half of the, of the paper? Why paper first? Because it was, it is the it is the greatest amount of um, waste that is produced when it comes to dry waste. So we we thought of what if we focus first on on paper only, uh, only in low density and medium densities. They are the highest producers of of, of waste, which made sense at that time. But as you will see in the results section later. It, the results came out quite different because remember in the high density areas we 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 have the highest population so basically low density and medium areas only have like one zero point four percent of the population so why did we um uh, choose to to say what if we 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 focus on 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 recycling only half of this waste because we wanted a start because there are things like spoiling. There are many factors that can, there are things like uh, people not cooperating to this and all that, that can affect the, the, the state in, in which we find the paper and the plastic, which will deem them either recyclable or no longer re recyclable. So we, we couldn't, unlike we did for food levels, so we couldn't put it at 100%. So that's why we just chose at 50%. And then for level two, we 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 focused on okay, what if we we recycle half of the paper in low density and medium areas, and also half of the plastic and paper in the uh, in these uh, social economic classes? The implementation level three, what if we recycle all the paper and plastic, or half of all the paper and plastic in the city? And then scenario two, we in uh, scenario four, we we assessed what if we we introduce both paper and plastic recycling and composting of all food leftovers in all the in, in the different um social economic classes and what it would achieve uh, for for the city now before i go there uh, i just want to show you uh some of the okay where are you Sorry, just a minute. Now oh, I can't find what I'm looking for. I think you're going, you want to go to view, then outline? Yeah. That's what you wanted? Yeah, nav yeah navigate. On the left, on the left and next to web layout. Oh, never mind. I'm just. Mm, outline. Can't find outline is on the top right of that views to the, up a little no left 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 outline oh yeah is that oh snap is it no doesn't like to let me just scroll down because I'm gonna spend a long time I don't know what's happening to my um I guess it's um. I'm just a bit nervous right now. Because I couldn't put these graphs there because uh, they are quite much so. So what we did at first, uh, we wanted to, um, because the mo it, when it comes to the model, we, we tried to use, um, we tried to develop equations. Why did we end up just using the basic equations? Because uh, if you look at the equations that we, we use to calculate the, the, the different variables, you find that these are the ones that they use to calculate in the, in the municipality, in the municipal report, those are the things that they use to calculate. But we wanted to kind of like uh, develop equations which actually simulate for maybe for the next um, uh, 50 years or 100 years and all that. But then the data was too little and it wasn't reliable for us to develop equations. We could develop equations, but they weren't reliable enough to, in order for, to, for us to predict uh, uh, like uh, other years to come. So that is why we ended up just using the equations that we used to calculate in the, in the municipality are the same ones that we, we used in the model. 
because we only had like four or five years of data to work with. So what we did was uh, we, we ended up just working with averages because the model was good at predicting averages like over an interval because we know that the municipality works over like a five year, they have a five year interval. So whenever they have like a waste management plan, they, they, they use it for five years, but every year they um, uh, assess its performance every year. So in this case, what we did, we also tried to, when we were doing our simulations, we also tried to do those five year intervals and then we would calculate the averages and see how it performs because the model performed better in those uh, averages than in, in, in simulating years this is why you, you find that here we only have like uh, implementation level one, two, three, but this is over a year of, uh, this is over a period of 2013, 2019. So we basically, our first, simu our first runs were um, over the, were, were over a historic period of time because we also found that when we were uh, checking our data and screening our data, the municipality was also calculating uh, their figures wrong because they they used the same population since 2013. They were using the same population, like 1.4 million for each year. So basically, although the 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 um, what you call it, the, um, there was a po there's a population growth rate that was estimated in the last census in Harare, but they are according to their calculations, their population remained constant. So we ended up uh, uh, using the population growth rate to, to simulate the changes in, in the population over the years. So the first simulation runs was just over the years 2018, 2019, because remember these are uh, things that we wanted to show the municipality, probably people who don't have much knowledge, uh, although we are also, I'm also still learning about simulation and stuff. Most of the people in the municipality, according to literature, they are not even um, educated for the job. So they would probably not understand much figures. If you show them graphs, then they would understand better. So this was, this was these simulations were also done in order to also present to the, to, the, to the municipality to say, okay, this is, for example, scenario one, this is where you are now for the years of 2019. This is where you were in terms of uh, the variables, these variables that um, are listed here, the average household solid waste remaining in the dump site and, and average uh, uncollected waste recycling rate. And okay, if you had, if you, if, if over that historic period of time, you had implemented uh, a level one, of composting of food leftovers, which is only in high density areas. This is what you, this is the changes that you have, uh, they would have achieved in your variables or over the period of five years. These are the changes that you have achieved, you would have achieved uh, when you, if you had implemented uh, composting of food leftovers uh, in high density and medium density, then the same thing here. So for the next graph, it was the same thing. Uh, they, and recycling in the different implementation levels. And then in this one, it was composting and paper recycling and plastic recycling, the different implementation levels. Basically, it was the performance, the performance of, of these systems, the likely or the likely performance of the system if it had been implemented over that historic period of time. So what we did now is we then identified from these results, we then identified for example, uh, the percentage change uh, in, uh, for example, let me just say um, a recycling rate. And then we, we compare the percentage change in recycling rate if we implement a uh, level one of implementation, we calculated the percentage change in the change in recycling rate. And then we also calculated the percentage change between scenario one and implementation level two as to measure the, the performance, like which which level of implementation is it be, are we, are we, should we best implement first when compared to the other? For example, if we compare recycling rate uh, from scenario one to, to implementation level one for paper and, and plastic recycling, then we would go to composting and food leftover. We compare recycling percentage change in recycling from scenario one to implementation level one. And we can see that 
it was it, it was greater at, com at composting food leftovers plus paper and, and, and plastic recycling. So we would rather implement this one. But at the same time, if we can't completely implement uh, and, and plastic and food leftover recycling, then what if we compare between these two? Uh, paper and plastic recycling and composting of food leftovers. It is better. It seems better to, to implement it first in, uh, in scenario two, implementation one, implementation level one, and to start with uh, scenario three, implementation level one. I don't know if I'm making sense, but I'm trying to explain here. Uh, I, please let me know if I'm if I'm not making sense because that way that is how we now say okay, it is better for the municipality. If they are to introduce, and if they can't introduce the best um, uh, uh, com composting, I mean, community-based waste management program in the entire city, so it would rather they would rather just first implement it in in composting of food leftovers in high density areas first before they start talking about paper and plastic recycling in in the high density areas. I don't know if I'm making sense, but this is how we we came about to to finding the, the, the top performing um, uh, scenarios at, at different implementation levels, where now we, um, where now we developed uh, the, the community-based waste management strategy implementation chart. But this also is based on averages, but now it, it was based on an average in uh, future projections that was from the year 2000, uh, to, 2022 to 2026. Like what we were trying to show here is that, okay, this is the, the, the current state of the system. If we imp implement scenario two implementation level one for the next five years, for example, if, we, if the city cannot implement, fully implement the whole program, then if we start with this, how much change can we bring to the system? As we can see that the average, uh, also, solid waste, man, solid waste in the dam site remains the same, even across the whole the entire scenarios. The, the average um, uh, waste re, uh, remaining in the dam site remains the same. Uh, also, also remains the same until uh, um, scenario two implementation level two. When we introduce in in this scenario four implementation level two, that is when we introduce paper and plastic recycling. Here there is paper and plastic recycling as well. Here there is uh, paper and plastic recycling in high density and medium density areas. Here there is paper and plastic re and, uh, recycling in the entire city. So why would, um, for example, would we have the uh, same amount of waste in the dump site? Because uh, when it comes to composting of food leftovers, remember it is being done at the household level there. And then we are assuming that now paper and plastic recycling is going to be done at the at the dump site, so that is why we are saying um, the average uh, household because we are assuming that the capacity of the municipality collect waste remains the same. The amount of the amount of illegally dumped waste now reduce starts it starts to reduce when we implement paper and plastic recycling because we are saying now we are removing that paper and plastic from the waste that is already in the dump site. So. These are basically the 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 the, uh, the charts that we developed, and we just assume we just uh, we are yet to actually one of our, our goals of the study was to do focus group discussions before uh, we even developed the model, and after we developed the model, we wanted also to do focus uh, group discussions, but because of COVID and uh, ethical clearance, also became a problem. For us to get one, for us to go to Zimbabwe and, and organize one, it was now a problem. So we ended up not doing those. So the municipality hasn't seen these. Uh, we just sent them the results, but they we haven't presented just to see what their reaction is to them. So basically, in summary, this is uh, um, what we 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 came up with. The point was to. Uh, kind of like estimate um, what is the material recovery potential? What, how, how can we bring about a change? How much of the waste can we remove from the system if we introduce this, this uh, uh, um, community-based waste management uh, uh, program? And to what extent would we 
implement it for us to achieve certain results and all that kind of stuff. So these are some of the figures that we came up with, uh, the percentage changes in recycling rate and the controlled waste treatment. And I think I have talked enough. I don't know if there are any questions. <laughs> Yes, thank you. We're actually one minute past the hour, so we can take one question if anybody has anything to say. Please feel free to unmute yourself. I don't think there were any other questions in the chat, but Phyllis had a question for the audience, actually. Are there any other ways that Phyllis can model the system, model the problem, given the available data and aims of the study? So if anyone would like to chime in on that. That would also be appreciated. Are there any questions for Phyllis? Okay, then I would like to thank you, Phyllis, for your presentation and I'll stop the recording.